An internal security department spokesman said there's currently no specific terrorist threat to Singapore, but the ongoing developments are still of concern, including how the escalating civil conflict in Afghanistan could allow terror organizations to regroup or establish safe havens. Here to discuss how this could affect Singapore is Muhammad Faisal Abdul Rahman, a research fellow from the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies, Center of Excellence for National Security. Welcome to the show, Faisal. Faisal, what are the main areas of concern? Well, Afghanistan is a good example of the ebb and flow of terrorism as a multi-generational threat. The Taliban there has long relations with Al-Qaeda. If you recall, Singaporean Jama'a Islamiyah members sent the surveillance videotape for the plot to attack Isha MRT to Al-Qaeda in Afghan before September 11. So AQ is playing the long game and the Taliban's gains may provide the chance to rebuild its networks. The jihadi ecosystem in Afghanistan could grow and enable elements in Taliban and Al-Qaeda to better cooperate and Islamic State Khorasan to compete for influence. Even now, there are reports that Islamic State Khorasan is trying to draw Taliban supporters who are skeptical of the peace process. The Islamic State regards Afghanistan as strategic to its caliphate goals. Mm. What's concerning for the next decade is how the Taliban's gains could give newfound motivation for Southeast Asian jihadi groups and homegrown extremists. The US's withdrawal and the past Soviet Union uh, defeat could be framed as online propaganda that, with patience, Jihadism will ultimately triumph over military and non-Islamic powers in a contest of wills. And it could also revive interest in the black flags of Khorasan end of time narrative, which jihadi groups in the past have exploited as a call for action. Right. Uh, so Faisal, what are Singapore's uh, protective measures? And you know, among other things, what more can be done amid terror groups using social media to spread their influence? Okay, so Singapore has more protective and legal measures since September 11. This includes the Terrorism Suppression of Financing Act that uh, prohibits pro providing material support to terrorist entities, including the Taliban. There will be more police CCTV cameras that could help to detect hostile surveillance. And our tight border security and COVID-19 travel restrictions could help to keep out foreign terrorist fighters. For social media, the concern is what if the Taliban's support for Al-Qaeda is covert while portraying a softer public image of itself to boost its political legitimacy as the government of the day? What if the Taliban plays the foreign policy game well and gains recognition from the great powers Russia, China and other regional states? So firstly, this could strengthen the online narratives of the Taliban and other jihadi groups could leverage it on social media. Secondly, this is quite a unique conundrum for social media companies. Banning a foreign terrorist organization is quite straightforward. However, what if that organization has some diplomatic recognition and the international community needs to work with it to send humanitarian aid or to protect some economic interests? Thirdly, I think we need to watch out for any increase of Islamophobic content on social media that could affect uh, race and religious relations in Southeast Asia and Singapore. 